bribery was actually tax deductible in all OECD countries into 2000. I repeat, it was tax deductible in all OECD countries until 2000. No wonder that third world countries lost jobs to Western ones because the Western ones actually had government subsidized corruption. Now that's only six, seven years ago. I've been working with those business people since 96 who said that's a major problem about extortion. If you go to third world countries, corruption is the biggest business killer in the fund. The reason why small companies in the developing countries stay in the unofficial sector or the grey sector is due to corruption. Now, for that company, it might not have the big causes or, or, or consequences, but to society, who's going to pay for the hospitals if nobody pays taxes? So, the, the growth of the grey sector, which you actually find in several developing countries, is a major problem to the, to the development of that country because there's no burden paying taxes, for instance. And we were asked, especially by NGOs, that how, how come you don't touch upon the moral issues? Because it's stealing. I said, well, it is a moral issue, but if you approach business, don't talk morality, talk business. That's, that's the best way of addressing business. Now to business, you can never go back to business and tell them, you've done something wrong, you've been involved in violation of human rights. The way you deal with business is that new uh, challenges, new uh, competences. And that was the formula. Also, we said, if you want to be part of the solution, you've got to admit you're part of the problem. Otherwise, somebody else will take over. That's how it started. Some processes is going on with regard to new ways of making business or social entrepreneurship, but, but I can't explain it. I, I'm, I'm just part of the process. Financial Times had a report one week ago saying that ethical branding was the strongest branding uh, instrument ever seen. And perhaps consumers in the future, especially in the rich part of the world, would like to see a new kind of business wherever in Europe care for the environment or other issues comes up. So this might be a new way of looking at generating business. Now in my world, um, we, can, we can stay on deliver uh, donations to the third world, but what really matters is if, if business comes up, healthy business. And that's actually what you hear from the NEPAD leaders and other African leaders that say, less support and more fair competition. That's a way out of it. So we went to the Danish um, development agency and said, okay, you have set up a zero tolerance policy, but the one who produced the policy also has the, the obligation to deliver guidance. And what we heard from the business people was that, does these folks ever know anything about operating in Nigeria? Do they want us to withdraw or what do they think about? So the idea came up that we should deliver very specific country information. We should build on local sources. We should deliver some generic tools. Seen from an investor's point of view, we deliver the initial screening. You are can actually look at what would be the dangers be in going into this or that country. And so that's pretty costly if you have to get a consultant to deliver that. And we offer it for free, meaning that the cost of considering should they enter a country has been reduced considerably. We went into the market and found out that the very big private detectives, they, 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 they really made a fortune on doing due diligence. Generally, they charge you 20,000 bucks a day, US dollars, okay, to conduct the due diligence. So somebody came out and said, yes, we will produce the Linux version. Uh, 
which small companies could use themselves because by using these tools they would actually know where are the black holes. Mm -hmm. When you look at several of the companies, also the big ones, their contact, their gathering knowledge from civil society is something new. Possibly because they realize that in getting new ideas or learning new areas, it will cost them quite a lot or would even be impossible. So the smart way is so to say exploring new ways of gathering information or actually cooperating with somebody. So I, I think that what we are a little part of, because we were surprised by our success, honestly, to me, is, is that to, to somebody this, this might be a new way of generating a business, and that we are kind of business facilitator in, in, in several areas. Uh, Stato, for instance, in Venezuela, has paid Amnesty to set up a training program for judges just to deliver the infrastructure in this area. They just fund it. They, 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 there's no relation to them. And we know that anti-corruption agencies all over the third world are underfunded. The interesting thing is that although we thought it was going to be a hardcore business tool, we had had uh, several uh, requests from uh, civil society organizations. It turns out that they are facing exactly the same problems as business. So we would be do, doing training on civil society organization. Uh, and the trade-off is that they will help us to gather information and they will test the tool to make it, to make it better. Mm -hmm. Three weeks after we had uh, the first comment from Mozambique, Somebody at a development agency in Mozambique who discovered that and shown it to his colleagues in the donor community and they started writing us telling us that we were missing one report about this, another report about that and we responded to that and we actually received drafts meaning that they were not even published yet. But what actually had happened was that they had taken over ownership it was, it was them now running the portal in Mozambique. Now this is one of the most classical dilemmas or problems in development aid. How do we promote local ownership? What we actually learned is that to the extent that people knew about the portal, they actually took ownership, writing back to us, telling us how to improve it or feeding us with information. You should look there, you should look, look there. Uh, so, looking at the portal today, at least one-sixth of the traffic is south stops, meaning that people in developing countries is using the portal themselves. So the, 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 the very big surprise is that when you start looking at these issues, some of these successes are locally, actually. Some of the major corruption scandals related to Danish development aid, they were actually discovered by a local audit agency, general auditors in Kenya and other places. So the competence is there. It's just bringing it forward, setting up a network. Um, that's, that's, that's the challenge today, to produce the standards to set up the network, meaning that companies who say no to bribery shouldn't feel it as a loss towards their competitors because if the competitors stay on bribing this situation won't stay on then the gap will too big be too big so we need a supporting structure for dealing with anti-corruption issues